Today, I reveal my entire $23,000 investment into 11 different SPACs. These SPACs have not yet found a target, but they either have great management, a very interesting target sector, or great risk reward. We've already seen one pop over 30% in one day. Let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew and today we are talking about 11 ultra promising SPACs that we are trying to find before everyone else. Give me the format. In the first minute or so, I'm gonna explain what this portfolio is all about, how it works, and why it's called the incubator portfolio. Then we'll just start going through them one by one based on percentage gain. And a quick reminder, the Patreon and Discord is open for the month of February and the prices are changing at the end of today, February 7th. Top tier patrons get access to this portfolio, my public portfolio, and anything else that I try and research and come up with. So if you genuinely want to become a long-term investor who can think for themselves, make sure to click that Patreon link down below. There's no one else doing it like us, right? Right now. All right, let's get started with how the incubator portfolio works. I simply buy pre-target SPACs, ideally as close to $10 as possible with good management and good prospects. If you have a feeling you already know how this portfolio is going to work, go ahead and click this timestamp right here. Otherwise, I'll explain it in about a minute. SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. And to put it in simple terms, SPACs are companies that just hold a bunch of cash that will be used, hopefully, in a merger or acquisition. Usually, SPACs have a team of executives who are searching for a private business in a specific industry, like EVs, tech, or life sciences, because SPACs help private companies go public. Their shares will most often have a floor of $10 while they're still looking for a target because if it drops below that, it basically means it's trading below the value of the cash that the company is storing. It's like saying that your $1 bill is worth 99 cents. It doesn't really make sense. The thing is, these SPACs sometimes have up to two years to find a target company. So their shares can hover around $10, $11 for months on end, which is why you need to account for opportunity cost. But once they find a target, they likely pop anywhere from five to 10, even 50% in some extreme cases. And it's hard to catch those pops if you're not already in the SPAC before the announcement. So that is why the SPACs in this portfolio are all pre-target SPACs. Because if you can find a SPAC with good management, a promising target industry, and a share price closer to $10, you suddenly have asymmetric risk. If I buy a SPAC for $10.50 and I don't find a target, then I'll probably get my shares back around $10 a piece and I'll lose 50 cents or just under 5%. But if the SPAC announces a merger with a promising private company, it will likely pop on the news and if it's a good one, it could even jump 20 to 30%. Let's get into the portfolio. Before we jump into this, I wanna say that I think pre-target SPACs should only be bought with excess cash. This one is a little heavier for me because it's more of an experiment, but you have to take into account, again, opportunity cost because the longer you hold a stock that stays flat or still or doesn't move that much, the more opportunity you're missing out on for stocks that are continuing to rise. In other words, I probably wouldn't buy as many SPACs as you're about to see in this portfolio. Rather, maybe use this as a launch pad for your research so you can really concentrate on a couple of SPACs here and there if you wanna get involved. Of course, we had to color code the portfolio. Gold means that it was a pre-target SPAC, then it just recently found a target. Green means that we bought it under $11. Light blue means we bought it under 12, and black means we bought it for more than $12, which is a bit more risky because of the higher premium. Let's get into it. All right, first up is Perching Square Tontine Holdings, ticker PSTH. I actually bought this one back in November and I made a whole video on this one spec right here, so I'll make this quick. It's led by Bill Ackman, the founder and CEO of the activist hedge fund Pershing Square Capital. And what makes this special is the total value of Ackman's SPAC at about $4 billion, while the typical SPAC is usually between $200 million and $1 billion. Additionally, Ackman's own fund may co-invest up to another $3 billion when a target is identified, potentially bringing the total investable funds up to $7 billion. And what's interesting is that other long-term investors like Seth Klarman have staked large positions in PSTH. Their criteria for this SPAC is a mature unicorn with a predictable free cash flow generative business model with profitability, strong moat, and exceptional management. It has risen considerably and rumors of Stripe or Coinbase have come up a lot. However, Coinbase seems a little too out there for Ackman and it comes with a lot of regulatory uncertainty and Stripe has no problem raising capital right now, so I don't see why they would really need to go public at this moment. So don't be surprised if Ackman picks a boring, temporarily discounted name like Subway. In the past, he has bought large positions in stocks like QSR and CMG or Chipotle. Our next biggest gainer is VJC, Virgin Group Acquisition Corp. And yes, 
I know this one announced a merger with 23andMe already, but we got in before that announcement at $13.97 per share. And this is actually a perfect example of one of the incubator portfolio positions hatching. Now I'm going to decide if I want to hold, sell, buy more. What am I going to do with this position? I haven't done full DD on 23andMe quite yet, but instead of that, I'm going to explain to you what I saw in this pre-target SPAC and why I was willing to pay a premium of $13.97. It had about $400 million in trust with a deadline of roughly October 2022. They were targeting consumer-facing companies that operated in sectors that Virgin has historically created significant shareholder value. In this case, they went with health with 23andMe. And this part right here is why I was willing to pay the premium. The Virgin Group's resources, ranging from its experienced investment executives to skilled brand experts, will support the sourcing and evaluation of acquisition targets for our company. So not only were all the Virgin brands helping source this deal, but it was my interpretation after reading the rest of the S1 filing that the business merging or being acquired would actually get the benefits of the network effect of the entire Virgin portfolio. And this is what all the Virgin brands are just for context. To me, that is a massive advantage both for sourcing and the potential target, which we now know, and that's why I was willing to pay the premium. Additionally, the investors leading VGAC had a track record of investing in notable non-brand companies such as Slack, Square, Twitter, Ring, TransferWise, and Pinterest, among others. So that made me really confident in management's investing acumen. Yes, this one hatched, but I hope it is a good template or example of what I'm looking for in these pre-target SPACs. Let's move on. Next up is HACK, H-A-A-C, or Health Assurance Acquisition Corp. This SPAC has $500 million of dry powder, potentially 575 million, with a deadline of November 2022. I've also talked about this one before in this video right here, so I'll make this one quick. This SPAC is led by executives from Livongo Health Health, which ended up merging with Teladoc. Both are healthcare stocks that have done very well for our portfolio. Livongo is an absolute beast of a company, so I love having that management here in this SPAC. And their mission is to find a company at the intersection of technology and healthcare, as it is one of the most significant value creation opportunities of this decade, in their opinion. They'll look for companies that have high growth potential, expanding total addressable markets, and are led by mission driven CEOs. The two main investors in this SPAC were early investors in Livongo, Grammarly, Snapchat, and Stripe. On to the next one. We're going to be jumping all the way down here to the units with NOACU or Natural Order Acquisition as our third largest gainer. These tickers down here are units, which just means that these names will eventually be split into warrants and common stock. And everything we've covered so far up above is common stock. NYC is targeting emerging growth companies developing nutritious, sustainable food that is comparable to animal-based products. Specifically, they want a company disrupting the animal-based protein and food industry. Their leadership includes Sebastiano Castiglioni, I'm sorry if I butchered that, who has invested in everything from bioscience to food to ag to tech. And he's been an investor in more than 60 plant-based food and beverage companies. Paresh Patel founded Sandstone Capital with over $1 billion in assets under management, and also the founder of Sparta Group, a multi-billion dollar family office. He was also the executive producer of The Game Changers, a viral film on the health benefits of a plant-based diet. Lastly, it would be absolutely insane if they could take a company like Impossible Foods public. They have about $230 million in trust and an estimated deadline of November 2022. Our next biggest gainer so far is CMLF or CM Life Sciences and this one's a doozy. We've scooped up some shares at $12.67 and I think this one will be worth every bit of that $2.67 premium. They have over $400 million in dry powder and they're targeting the life sciences industry, specifically life sciences tools, synthetic biology, and diagnostics. On their board of directors is Sean George who is also the co-founder and CEO of Invite. You may have heard of them. There's also Emily LaProust, or LaProust, president and CEO of Twist Biosciences. Twist is the second largest holding in ArcG and Invite is just number 15, just to give you an idea of their leadership in the genomics and biotech space. Their deadline should be in about September 2022. And then there is IMPX, or AEA Bridges Impact Corp. 
This one was more of a play on risk reward since I could get it for just 86 cents over $10. They listed ideally $400 million in cash on their preliminary prospectus and they should have a deal by October 22nd if everything goes well. Their focus is a company that can help create a more sustainable and inclusive economy that is ideally in line with the UN sustainable development goals like access to clean water, health services, education, climate change, and more. As we move on, I want to remind you that the incubator portfolio portfolio and pre-target SPACs is not really investing, it's much more speculation. When you buy a pre-target SPAC, you are quite literally speculating and just hoping that they will merge with a profitable venture. These kinds of SPACs really don't generate any kind of revenue or cash flow, and I want to remind you that I have the large majority of my money in actual long-term investments. Let's move on. Our next position of the day, CHFW or Consonants HFW Acquisition. This is yet another life sciences play. I'm not too heavily invested just yet, but the risk reward is quite attractive here in my opinion, sitting at just 1038 per share. They have 92 million in trust and an estimated deadline of November, 2022. They are yet another life sciences play, as I said, targeting healthcare, particularly biotechnology. And their target company will have the following criteria. The first of which is multiple shots on goal, meaning more than one product in the pipeline to diversify risk. And you can feel free to pause here to read through the rest. Then we have GYAC or GIA Acquisition Corp. Strapped with about 100 million in cash and yet another deadline in November, 2022, GIA is targeting the biopharma industry as well. You can start to see a trend developing in my targets, can't you? Again, I primarily like GIA because it was trading under $11 per share in a very promising target sector, but also because much of their management comes from Samsara Bio Capital. And if you look at Samsara's performance over the years, their portfolio portfolio value has steadily increased from 2018 until now, and these are in the thousands, so their portfolio is worth about $358 million as of September 2020. All right, and here we have our biggest blunder of them all thus far, FMAC, First Mark Horizon Acquisition. What happened here was that there were rumors of FMAC merging with Discord, and being someone who has built my entire business pretty much around Discord, I got very emotional and jumped on the train. So I'll be the first to admit this was certainly an emotional lapse on my part and as we all know emotion is the enemy to making money in the stock market. But at the same time, FMAC has a fantastic leadership team. Firstmark has backed companies like Shopify, Pinterest, Riot Games, DraftKings, Airbnb, Upwork, and yeah, Discord. Firstmark also runs something called The Platform, which is a proprietary suite of events, resources, and networking opportunities where they can shine a spotlight on the portfolio companies that they've invested in and hopefully accelerate their growth. With about 400 million in trust and leadership from DraftKings, EA, and more, FMAC will set out to try and target a company in any of these following industries. They're really going after a generational technology or technology-enabled business, and that's what I love about this spec. By the way, I don't know if you know, but there's this really weird rule on YouTube where if you breathe through your nose while watching this video, you have to hit that like button. So if you've done anything that looks like this, then you're gonna have to you know, like this video. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna have to like it too, it sucks. Uh, but yeah, I'd really appreciate that. All right, two ticker symbols left. We saved the best for last. Let me know if you like these ones in the comments below. Jumping back into the units, we have SWBK slash U or Switchback to Corp. Glad to be in on this one at 11.68 on these units. Now you may be familiar with SBE, the SPAC that has forexed in value and is set to merge with ChargePoint, an EV charging station company. Yep, SWBK is those same people. As you may have guessed, they're targeting the energy technology arena, looking for sustainable and innovative solutions. They look to put over $300 million to use before their estimated deadline of January 2023. So this is a long one. Their acquisition criteria is honestly pretty vague, but I'm willing to let their track record speak for itself here. I think if they can indeed find a company at an inflection point, we could see an SBE part two. And finally, all the way down at the bottom, we have Dune U or Dune Acquisition. I originally bought this one as speculation that it would be Chamath's pipe 
investment in SaaS because it seemed to be one of the few SPACs specifically targeting SaaS companies. And for those of you who don't know, SaaS is software as a service. Nevertheless, I'm still happy to be holding Dune, who has about 170 million in trust and a deadline of December 2022. They're targeting a pre-unicorn or a company with an enterprise value between 300 million and $1 billion because they think there are plenty of companies under a billion dollars that could easily reach that milestone with good management. They're looking for a company in what they call SaaS 2.0 or the migration to interconnectivity, workflow and optimization through AI, machine learning, robotic process animation, and no code development. Their criteria includes fintech and software in general, but most importantly, either leading market share or being in a market where they can become market leaders, as well as organic revenue growth with profitable customer acquisition. They also want a strong moat with high retention rates and potential for high cash flow conversion. Their criteria seems a lot stronger than most of the S1 filings I've read. So that concludes the reveal of the incubator portfolio for now, and I will leave you with this. Schmoth himself said SPACs may be easy to raise, but they are hard to execute and success isn't guaranteed. Good luck to all the players. To me, he's basically saying that there are now so many SPACs out there that it's getting really competitive. And there's been articles written about this. And there's a lot of speculation going on, just like what I'm doing with this portfolio, to be quite honest. And if you speculate too dangerously, it might end poorly. Not all SPACs will find a deal and not all deals will be sealed. Did I mean to rhyme? No. However, you can control your risk through the premium that you're willing to pay on these pre-target SPACs. Moving forward, I'm going to try and restrict myself from buying any pre-target SPAC that is over $12. That way I can protect myself from losing over 20%, which is still a lot. But there are just some SPACs out there that have such great management and such great prospects that you can almost try and justify it. The first one that comes to mind for me is CMLF. I think that one has a lot of potential considering who's leading it and the space that they're looking into. If you found any value in this video and I hope you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out a quote of the day. You might just learn something. I really like the one that I put up here today. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily posts about my portfolio, stocks I'm watching, and all that good stuff. And if you're watching at this point in the video, you are the real MVP. Don't forget your peace and thank yous.